All right, so this is where the real trail building starts from the comfort of my living room. So here's the map of the area we've been working at. This is a topographical map. Uh, these lines in this case indicate a 10 meter difference of height. So the closer they are, the steeper an area is, the farther apart they are, um, yeah, the more flat. So in this case, the last few videos have focused on this bit right here. Today I'm gonna head out and follow this purple line and I want to make this little area a loop. It'll be actually a counterclockwise loop that breaks off of this one trail and uh, yeah it's gonna be more technical cross-country style but there's a nice big rock roll right here and it is very easily 10 meters of this elevation maybe maybe less um, so I need this trail to come at this angle and meet up and so then we've got our loop here that you can do an or get out of it and then this red trail here that comes off this ridge and um, drops into here it used to be just a dead end and you had to walk out of this with your bike and it's set. So now we've extended it, so now you can come over this. There's a different rock roll to here that's pretty fun, and then you you can climb out. And then eventually you could extend this from the highest peak of this ridge, come down and get all the way to this area here, which actually leads you right into downtown. So it's pretty cool how close all this jungle is to civilization, but That'll be, yeah, in the coming months, we'll get working on extending this to this. This will be a green loop. This will be a blue loop. Um, yeah, it'll be really, really fun. So, what we've done is we've worked out how we think this is going to go on paper, on the map, but we're going to go out there and see if I can actually walk this and get from point A to point B. All right, so here we are in reality. We've looked at the map. We've seen that, yeah, according to what I've sketched out, um, yeah, that it should work, right? So uh, at this stage, we're gonna do the, the footwork and see if we can make it happen um, in real life. That is a pretty good ravine there. And I'm coming from just above this tree and I want to come across to here. Unfortunately, right here and down is about a, it's kind of hard to see because there's stuff growing out of it, but it's a big ravine. There's actually a lot of rock right, right up and through here. Um, so that sucks. But it's easily as deep as I am tall. So instead of coming here, if I divert it before that tree and come across right here, there's a different angle. So there's the tree again. So I come across, plant it on these rocks here. I can kind of potentially do a rough bench cut through here uh, and reinforce with the rock that's laying around here across this area above this tree. You can probably use the rocks. You might not even need a bridge, actually. And just pile up these rocks. And then that won't wash away. It'll let the water continue going through. Then we come across. And this section here, we just, it's about a two foot lip on this. We just bash that out. And then continue on this way. So, yeah, sections like this, you really gotta look at what's here and then Use your imagination and then try to use what's here to kind of, one, minimize impact, and then two, this will be easier. You just use what nature has given us and just kind of manipulate it slightly to work. So I'm gonna run with that. 
that will be the plan. So I'll pick up my exploration from this point. I've been marking the trees with my white scraps of paper right at my eye level. I do that so that I can use this tool right here called an inclinometer. And what it does is it measures uh, the percent of a slope, the grade of a slope. Since I'm using the tool at eye level, I want to mark the tree at eye level. That way, since I'm the one using the tool, it'll be as close to accurate as we can be. So I'll stand next to a tree and tie it right at my eye so that when I turn and I look, I get an accurate reading. You line up that with that marker. And boom. From this point, I'm gonna make this the low spot. And so I'm gonna come down and then I'm gonna use that momentum to come up the hill a little bit. I don't wanna just sustain that 5%. It's kind of boring that way. And then people get too much speed. So prior to where this dips down, I'm actually going up slightly. And then you drop in, so then you, you pedal. You come off the pedals as you come down the hill. And you get up as you get back up the hill you might need to pedal some more or you drop back down again so then you kind of want to maintain all that what we would call flow and kind of surf the hillside as well as what they would say so we want to do that to just make it interesting it also gives the water places to come off every time we dip it down I'm gonna I'm gonna bump it up from here and then I'm gonna reference my map and see where I'm at um, a minute ago I was lower than I expected had planned to be but now I can dip it down and probably come back up and end up where I was planning to go and so I can make my turn and then be I want to get it so that I'm at the top facing this this exposed rock so here is a great example of how hard it is to eyeball grade so got my marker and I'm standing next to it it's right in my eye I turn and I look back to my uh, previous marker and from there I thought to here looked like I was going down uh, it's actually level it's zero but from here to there um, that's another thing too like I thought it was going down and I, I wasn't so if uh, you try to do a whole trail like this and you don't check uh, you'll, you'll find that yeah your estimations won't be accurate this thing is your best friend. So if you want to do this stuff and like not uh, waste your time doing things twice or whatever, you, you, you gotta get one of these, it's well worth it. So according to my rough draft sketch, uh, I wanted to get to a certain part of the hill where there was a little bit more gradual incline. So it wasn't as steep and that was the whole goal of um, what I drew out, is I want to get to that part, make my turn, and then I'm facing straight onto this rock face. So, I've made it. I've got it linked up where I want it to go. I'm now standing in the middle of the, uh, the rock that I wanted to be on. It's a little covered up at the moment with leaves and stuff, but, uh, it is definitely um, exposed rock the whole way through. Um, so that's pretty cool. The uh, slope of this thing is about 27%, 30%. So what we'll end up doing <clears throat> is clearing off this stuff off to the left because the trail, it doesn't quite meet it straight on. And so we're gonna make it so that you can come through this and then be pointed straight. Uh, then you don't have to worry about running in. There aren't any big trees at the bottom of this, so it's, it's perfect. Um, you, this will be quite loose, so you can have a, your brakes on a little bit, but you'll, you'll be cooking through this. So, Alternatively, there's a, another line off to the left. It's not a steep, still kind of a rock roll though, but more doable in that base right there uh, another trail meets so this one comes down 
ends, this other one comes in, ends, the other. So you have like three areas all going this way. And so that, since this is a rock, I don't have to worry about erosion or anything. And it'll be fun. And so yeah, you kind of you kind of see it there. Take off that way. So that's where we're going. So we've linked it up. Uh, now we'll just have to clear that and uh, dig in a couple sections and then we have our, our smaller loop near the base of the hill. Uh, everywhere else in the country the, the terrain sand. <clears throat> it's, a, it's very exposed and so this is pretty cool to have these kind of rock features. Pretty unique in general but especially here so pretty excited to get this linked up. And, Get working on it. Yeah, so thanks for following along today. That's all I had planned for my day on the trail. I gotta go home and spend the rest of the day doing, doing some homework. As always, see you on the trail.